Good morning. I'm out of China. I'm in Korea. In Incheon, Korea. I'm in this mini little town that is right outside the airport. It's like a mini international airport that never sleeps. They have all sorts of little restaurants. They got massage parlors. Lots of those. Um, so it feels a bit like a bit like Thailand, but we're in Korea. It's very weird because I've seen. Lots of Thai people around here, and see uh, restaurants like Chinese restaurants that looks like that's catering to the 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 real Chinese restaurant. So catering to Chinese tourists that are coming through. That didn't exist a few years ago. It was strictly Korean style food that we'd see here, but now we're seeing a diversity. Uh, shows you the type of population that is coming into Korea more and more. Anyways. Let me get onto my topic. My topic is my last vlog that I had in China. Now I'm going to talk about many people, and I realized I was looking at the content I was uh, uh, that I made that I forgot to mention. Uh, There's some people I forgot to mention, but most importantly, I forgot to mention uh, John Rinker, and the reason why is. I'm mentioning his name now is because my vlog topic is, is about uh, getting uh, sharing to happen within the NIS learning community and that journey that I went through. And John Rinker was very important in that journey. Um, he was part of the sharing um, of what was happening within the school, and I didn't mention him. The other thing to note at the in the notes page, I'll make little chapters where I'll mention, uh, reference the people that I talk about in this video, and it's a long video, so that if you don't want to watch the previous sections, you just want to skip to the point where I actually talk about you as an individual. Just click on that link, and it'll take you to that part of the video. So that's about it. Um, just as Korea, as you can see, or in China, as you can see, people will turn around and try to figure out, what am I doing? Same thing in Korea. Anyways, enjoy the video. All right, this is my last morning of being in Nanjing. And it's kind of ironic in the location that I am. I'm actually staying at uh, Sofitel in the center of the city. And Nanjing has two Sophie Tells. There's one near uh, Nanjing International School and there's one here. And when I first came to Nanjing, the school actually uh, hosted us at the Sophie Tell that's near uh, Nanjing. So it's interesting that my first day of being in Nanjing was at Sophie Tell. My last day of being in Nanjing is in the Sophie Tell. That wasn't planned, it just sort of happened by accident. The topic I'm going to talk about is uh, a goal that I set up with uh, UN, I think it was in October or something, I can't exactly remember, but it was in 2010 when I first started at Nanjing International School and he was making a series on uh, making a wish. And the wish I had was, uh, how do I take the incredible learning that's happening at Nanjing International School and get people to share it beyond uh, the little bubble that we have within the school. Um, I've situated myself on a typical uh, uh, Nanjing uh, street. What makes fa uh, Nanjing famous is uh, these trees that we see um, uh, behind me. And um, the whole city is just lined up with uh, these trees everywhere. And in the summertime, it makes it a nice place because it's not as hot here. Hello. 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 You want to say hello to the camera? Good morning. Hello. 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 <laughs> That's uh, another aspect of Nanjing. People, no, I'm filming, and 
interested in what I'm doing and a friendly hello. He was hanging out here right next to me for quite a while. You couldn't see him, he was off camera. So the best thing to do is say, turn the camera around to him, say hello. So I want to get back into the details of um, trying to get uh, sharing to happen within the school community. My concern was I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to have sharing happen. I knew that tw Twitter was very successful in doing that, but being in China, uh, that wasn't an, it wasn't a, an option because you're requiring the people to circumvent the, the controls that the government has. So my first intention was to see if I could get sharing working with in the system that we have, and that is using Weibo, and that is using um, Yammer. And so I started uh, using those social networks. Actually, I started using every single Chinese social network possible, and also using Yammer to see if I could get um, sort of a sharing ecosystem going. With Yammer, I got a few people using it, and we have a tech committee, and they would be using it. But I never found it. It was successful because it only stayed within our community. I want something to share beyond our community. Uh, Yammer helps to keep that bubble going on. It doesn't help to break out. The Chinese social networks, uh, it's a whole different um, uh, experience. That's a another vlog just to talk about that um, and so I would say for my first two years or maybe first three years I didn't really have a lot of success in getting the, the school to use uh, Twitter as a, a sharing platform this being the morning time we're seeing a bit of the activities that happen here in the morning that's what China's famous for is morning exercise routine. So in this case, we have the dancing aunties, but I'm in a park where I'm seeing people doing Tai Chi and doing things with the swords. We'll go around, set up the camera, and I'll talk. But not about them, about uh, this journey that I've had. So in the earlier clip, I had said something about Twitter where what happened was I was using Yammer, I was using all these other things, it wasn't working. So I determined I think Twitter is the best tool to use despite being in China. So from 2010 to probably about 2012 or so, um, I was using Twitter personally. I wasn't, I wasn't really pushing it on, on anyone because um, I didn't feel that I should but my, my personal opinion of how Twitter is used is that it's, it's a very uh, personal tool that work, doesn't work for everyone. And when it works for some people, it's, 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 uh, it's sort of a, re a personal revolution for them. But it's a very personalized experience. And to force that and to believe that that experience is going to happen with everyone isn't always the case. And that's one of the failures of Twitter. It's got this very steep learning curve to it. So the uh, two years, 2010, 2012, what I did in, when I first came to uh, Nanjing International School is um, I got the domain name or the Twitter domain name NIS China established as a Twitter account and put the school logo onto it and just took control of it. The challenge was, what content do I share? How do I, do I create the own content and share it? And, and how does that represent the school? Um, it's easy to do it for myself, but for school, it's much more difficult. The challenge is, I'm not, I'm not a writer. I have ideas, but I'm not a writer. Uh, so I would say that if we looked at the Twitter account on NIS China and the activity on it, probably for the first two years, there's really not a lot of uh, happening on it. So much so that it actually got hacked a few times because I had I tied it to an, uh, an, an email account that I don't keep track of all the time. 
and I remember someone I had lists and at one point all those lists disappeared and I had to recreate it at that point I tied it to my school account and put a phone number to it so it could not be hacked um, we can see some of the activity there's a person with a tennis racket and a ball that's on a string this is normal every day in the morning you're gonna see at any not just Nanjing any city in in China uh, the people are very active and making sure that they get their exercise and especially in the morning so let's get back to the the Twitter account I think I had learned a lot um, about managing a school Twitter account when I was at Yokohama because at that school I also created the the YIS uh, Twitter account you definitely because you're going into new territory you're always gonna hit failures and you're gonna hit successes I I know I have failures I just can't remember what they were well actually I do remember one I, I think I sort of went into creating that account and I started using it but not being very good at notifying um, sort of the people above me about the power of what well Twitter had just started no one knew really what the power was so we were using it but we weren't being good at informing our bosses about uh, what this tool could do um, and there was nothing negative I don't think there was anything negative that came out of it because uh, but what I found is that to, to make Twitter really successful from an organizational side, you've got to get everyone on board, especially the, the leaders. They're the most important ones. So when I created this uh, the school account, I made sure that, that Lori knew about it. Um, and I said it's really important that the school have representation on, on the social network, Twitter, and I also said Facebook. And we created a Facebook page at that time too. And again, I had the struggle of what content do I put in there because I'm not a writer. And I don't, if, if you hire a writer, it's, it doesn't feel uh, real. It, you, can, you can see the generic aspect to it. The best writing happens from the teacher sharing what's happening in the classroom. But the challenge is if you ask teachers to take time away from their day to write something, it's they're already busy so how, how do you how do you get content from the classroom out to the world without it being a hassle and so these are the kind of conversations I had with Lori and it's not like I got the answer in in, in, in instantly it, it took me three years to figure out the answer for this because I had Lori on board um, and because I was able to communicate the absolute power of what this tool can do, I had his support moving forward. Now, he went really slow in implementing it. Um, and when I say slow, three years, right? Three years to start it. Here, we've got the people with the swords. Let's see if I can get out of the way a bit, but you can see them working in the background. This is their social network. Um, look like retired uh, people in their retirement and they come out in the park. And I'll stay away from them so I don't get stabbed. So back to the, so I had determined that Twitter was probably the best way to uh, share. The, the first, I think the first people that, the first thing people I can remember that I had success with getting uh, people to share within the school was, I, there was a PD long ago, and I can't remember what it was. It was, I was teaching, the, trying to teach the teachers how to use Twitter as a, a PLN tool. And my experience with giving PD on Twitter is a dismal. It's really bad. Uh, usually I'll get zero People take up Twitter afterwards, or one person. I mean, really, really, really bad. Um, on this one, I had uh, Andy Vasily in my in that class, and he's my success story because uh, after that, um, he was really interested in building out his PLN uh, through Twitter, and so I would 
I would count down Andy Vasley as one of the first people to really start to get Twitter use uh, spread within the school. Um, I, I think the, the best way to build Twitter is you have to have different people, different perspectives, have passion about it and share it with other people. Uh, then, then you'll get a slow uptake. Um, I, th I think what I call a genuine uptake. And I think the problem with PD or what we call, you know, we tell people you must do these things um, with the criteria, the different criteria of lists of items that the school wants you to do. And let's say once a day you have to share on Twitter. Well, if the school does that to all the teachers, I would say a vast majority will hate it and not like the experience because it's being forced upon them. Uh, what I've always wanted is not to force the use of Twitter, but reward the use of Twitter. So Andy Vasley was my first uh, successful uh, disciple of Twitter. And at this point, he's, you know, the thing is interesting, you know, people will look at me and they'll see my follower numbers and they, they, they it, just sort of a, and I think a lot of people follow in that mistake of judging a person's Twitter activity by the follower numbers and I've got I got a fair number and when Andy started this was in 2012 I think he started with an account with nothing no followers and we we sort of built that uh, slowly built it up now he's got more followers than I so we can see how um, you know th this this kind of stuff makes me happy I like that um, it, it, it's and and he's built out his own network of a learning network that's totally separate than mine and that's what Twitter is it's it's really an individualized uh, learning network for you so this is a uh, another part of the lake oh not lake this is a little pond within the park and we can see just all manner of different age groups walking around I literally saw someone that looked like they were 90. I don't know. They could have been older, just sort of making their effort to walk along, the, the get their exercise. And you know, you, what's, what's really fun is you just say uh, ni hao to them and you just get the best smile in the world. So back to making uh, Twitter a successful uh, learning uh, sharing platform for the school. I would say the big break happened with um, in 2013. Derek uh, Pinchback uh, organized a workshop, not a workshop, a conference called uh, "Feedback for Effective Learning," and um, it was at that conference that I think Twitter really took hold. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know what, because again, I even wasn't pushing people to use it. Um, I've been just modeling the use and other people have been using it like uh, Andy Vasley. Another person who started was Scott Langston. He had an account for a really long time, but he didn't understand its use. I had a conversation with him of how it could be useful and after that he started using it in a very powerful way. Uh, so these are sort of my, my early cheerleaders to, to make it work. Then uh, Derek was organizing the conference, he created an account. That's great, you have a leader in the school having a Twitter account and he was using it and he started to blog. And people at the conference started to use it. And what I noticed was because I was taking care of the school account, if anyone referenced the school account, I would immediately see it. If it had anything to do with the school, I would retweet it. And that started to be the solution for getting what was happening in the classroom out to the rest of the world. So that uh, action of people referencing the school account what I discovered was what people could do is if they got comfortable with tweeting 
on a regular basis and if they wanted to share something in the classroom what they have to do is reference the school account I would be notified um, through email and then I would just retweet it so if you look at the NIS China profile you'll see a history of us retweeting and initially it's a very small number of users and over time um, it gets bigger and bigger and I found that's that's far more effective than actually the account uh, tweeting itself um, because you're getting a diverse viewpoint of what's happening in the school um, and I think the other th benefit is that the person that is gets retweeted they're getting credit for the work that they've they've put towards that taking that picture or that statement and what we did with the school account was initially the school account said Nanjing International School inclusive learning community and inspiring international mindedness creative thinking um, and personal excellence that's the school's uh, mission and that's all good but it doesn't really explain what the Twitter account is. You, you can go to our website and you can see that same mission. I figured that the best thing to do is define what, what the school is. So what happened was actually during that conference, I believe our school director created his own Twitter account. And that was fantastic because I could change the bio to say that, uh, I could say uh, that and I, or I could, I broke it because you're, you're so limited, right? So I broke it down to saying, using the school's hashtag, which is NIS China, and I said NIS China's director is, and then reference Lori right away, and then uh, define what what the Twitter stream was about, and it's about learning at NIS, um, and that was the initial one, and later on, as I was looking at the tweet, there wasn't a lot of original content. And I put in later on, we retweet often because that's what we do. You can see we have a group Tai Chi. We're hitting the end of it, but I suspect they'll go into um, more sequences, or maybe I got the end of it. So the I'm hand holding this so it's a bit more shaky. So where was I? I was talking about uh, how the retweeting of Twitter was being a success. Um, and each year we would have more and more teachers sharing their learning through Twitter. The question people have said is we should put this on PD or we should put this on the daily bulletin and in my gut my gut is not to do that um, because I feel that by putting it by doing it that way it's it ruins what Twitter is and I think when when you push it too hard it Twitter looks like it's all about marketing and not about learning but when you don't push it and you let it happen in, a, in an organic fashion then I feel like it feels like learning and we've had we had PD sessions where we tried to get people involved with using Twitter as a sharing tool and it looked all good and everything and you would see a lot of activity with people doing it for that activity but you would not see that that activity move on past it was only happening for that activity and that's it and I've always wanted that, that 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 learning gets used beyond the actual activity. And I would hear feedback and said that it felt more like marketing. And for me, that's a sign that that we weren't successful in getting people to use Twitter in a meaningful way. So I've always been um, sort of low key about being upfront with marketing it or not marketing or advertising or getting people to use it. I, w I almost, I look at Twitter as being a very powerful tool, but it's sort of a back channel, it's underground. Um, but I would say that 
because of this low key approach, I feel that everyone that's using it is using it in a meaningful way. We're to the point where when I, in 2013, I would, I would get a tweet maybe once a week regarding the school and retweet it. We're at a point where every day I'm retweeting five pieces of content from different parts of the school. For me, that's a success of sharing the learning bubble that we have at NIS beyond Nanjing. The next challenge is because I'm leaving, I've been doing the underground sort of management organizing, making sure that Twitter traffic is retweeted um, and just keeping track of the account. The other thing I've learned is, and I only did this this year, was the challenge is how, what content do I fill the Facebook page? With Facebook, I actually take some of the content that I have on Twitter and just repost it into Facebook. And so that solved that problem. What I have found is Facebook is actually more successful in getting the information out to the community, whereas Twitter is successful in getting the information out beyond the community. I think the key is we're trying to get the information out. It doesn't matter which way you use Twitter or Facebook. Both work, but Twitter is great for aggregating the content uh, and Facebook is another way of disseminating the, the content. I'm in one of those uh, outdoor gyms, very famous. I've seen these all in Korea too. If you go in the woods uh, or any of the hiking paths that are in Korea, there's always going to be an outdoor gym. They have them here in China. Uh, any kind of park or open space, there's going to be a, a uh, outdoor gym. You can see this one is kind of picturesque. It's purple and it's being used by an older generation at this point. I've seen some very athletic uh, older people in, in, in this country and they're doing just insane types of things that I, I if there is a there's a parallel bar, if one of these people start doing some amazing stuff, I have to turn the camera to show that. So the the challenge is okay, so Twitter it's working. Facebook is working. We have a sharing economy happening within our within our school. The the trick is I'm leaving and I think the acid test to see how successful I am. I don't know, I don't like using the word I or we. I like we over I. Um, but I think the success will be defined by um, how does the, this learning community that's on Twitter um, continue to grow without me being in the scene. And I, I'm very happy with how what happened at Yokohama International School because there I was driving the use of Twitter. I left, Kim Cofino took over, and she led that torch in a very successful way. And if you go to Yokohama International School's uh, Twitter account, or you see anyone from that school, you can see there's a very healthy um, amount of sharing of, of the practice uh, on Twitter. So the success on this isn't been, um, I've achieved the goal that, that was set out, that I set out in 2010 on that video with Ewan, and that is to get sharing happening within our teachers around the globe. And my next goal, and this is only going to be, we're only going to see if I'm successful with that a few years from now, and we'll look at uh, the NIS China uh, learning community and is seen is that sharing continue to happen on Twitter and we should be able to see that I'm guessing I'm hoping using the NIS China uh, hashtag or using or looking at the school Twitter account and and if if we still see continual retweets or they might do it in a different way and that's fine because each you know there's there's different ways of doing it and 
if they just they define an easier and better way, great. But as long as we still see the sharing happening beyond uh, the NIS bubble, then that's a success for me. We'll see.